What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down five-star Ohio State wide receiver Brandon Ennis. So I hope this video helps you guys out. Hope it could teach you a few new things. But also, fellas, if you are a wide receiver or a quarterback and would like to train with us this offseason, we are going to be traveling out to 12 more cities and states across the country for two-day-long QB and wide receiver training camps. Next up on our camp tour, we'll be coming out to Charlotte, North Carolina. That camp is sold out, but then we'll be coming out to Dallas, the DMV, St. Louis, Honolulu, Boston, Cleveland, Austin, Seattle, Newark, Denver, and Los Angeles, California. So if you guys are local to one of those cities and would like to train with us this offseason, check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to have you out. Let's get started. So first example here is a route that Brandon Innes ran in that Army All-American Bowl. So we're going to be running a goal line fade in this specific scenario, and we have inside leverage catch technique from a DB. So let's play this thing full speed, and then we'll break it down. So Innes does a great job of using that hesitation skip release into a crossover. I call that a hesitation hop crossover release. So I'm going to play it full speed again one more time because he gets off the ball insanely fast and that's why he is so tough to guard one-on-one. -on -one. He knows how to run routes and he knows how to structure his routes. So if you're running a goal line fade, you see this all the time, especially from bigger wide receivers, guys who could win on a fade, is that they have inside leverage coverage and they just take off and run. That is exactly what a DB wants you to do when he is in this specific coverage. Let's think about the scenario here. DB's lined up inside shade for a reason. He is trying to take away the slant, the dig, the post. He does not want to get beat to the inside, and that is what he's taught. He does not have any help to the inside. His help is the sideline. So if I just take off and go run to that back pylon, I am doing him a favor. I am going straight to where he wants me to go, straight to his help, and he is going to get hands on me and squeeze me all the way to that sideline, making it a very tough throw for that quarterback. So what I have to do is I have to make sure that I threaten him to where he doesn't want me to go. That's the best way to get a DB to move. People always ask us about, well, coach, what's the best release to use in this situation? How should I run around in this situation? You should always try to threaten a DB where he doesn't want us to go. That is the best course of action to get him to move. Now, when you come off the line of scrimmage, though, we need to make sure that if there's any kind of gap between me and the DB, because that's what catch technique is, fellas, right? Catch technique is when the DB is two yards away and he is essentially catching us. He wants us to just go run to the pylon because he is going to catch us with his hands and squeeze me. So anytime that there's a catch technique, space between the two of us, I need to close the distance. I need to eat up that cushion and try to step onto the DB's toes. So when we try to step onto his toes, which some that Brandon Innes really showcases how high of a football IQ he has, that is what's going to get him more likely to move because that makes him uncomfortable. So when we come off the line, the release he decides to choose is a hesitation skip into a crossover. So anytime that we are doing a hesitation move or a hesitation hop, hesitation skip, the first step is with your back foot. This step is going to make you extremely balanced and extremely explosive for this type of release. So you see how he takes a punch step with his back foot. That step is what will springboard him into that DB's cushion. What a lot of times guys try to do with this like hesitation hop release that they see, you know, Devontae Adams, Keenan Allen, Justin Jefferson do, they will come from this position and essentially just try to jump at the DB. But when you jump at the DB, one, it's slow, and two, your cleats are out of the grass. If he gets hands on you, you're going to be jammed and knocked off of your route. So you need to make sure that we take something called this punch step. So I punch and then I reach with the right foot. Then it turns into the crossover move. So then he goes into his right and then left crossover. And that left crossover, obviously, you have to sell with your hips. You got to sell with your shoulders. You got to actually step outside that DB's frame because that is what will get him to move off that platform and can get us space to the outside. We just need to freeze him. We don't need to break his ankles every time, but that certainly obviously helps. So remember, this four-step release, fellas, that's the reason why we run it, but this is also the technique. If you want to be a great wide receiver like Brandon Innes, why he's so unguardable, you have to know how to run routes, but you also have to know why you run certain routes a certain way. So remember, we're punching, we're reaching, and then hitting that crossover four steps total. Let's play this again full speed. Great job by Brandon Ennis getting that separation and then winning on that fade ball. All right, so now the next route we're going to be talking about is still from the All-American Bowl, and he is going to be running something called a post-and-go route. So this is a double move. This is very similar to like a sluggo route, right? So that's what I'm sure probably most of you are familiar with, a slant and go. You break to a slant, you try to get this DB to crash on the slant, and then we slip back upfield. So he's running this like it's the post version of that, so it's a little bit deeper. So we have inside shade, off-man coverage. Now, when this DB is inside shade, remember, what is he trying to prevent? He's trying to prevent the inside route. He's trying to prevent the post, the dig, 
the slant. So if I have to run a route like a post, I don't want to try to necessarily attack his leverage. I want to try to get his hips to flip open. So he's running a post and go. So it's a little bit different, but we're going to break it down. So he comes off the ball. He attacks the outside shoulder of the DB, hits him with that post move, and then is able to win on that fade. Quarterback threw this thing just a tad late, but you got to think about the scenario. He's working with the quarterback he doesn't know. Everybody's new. Nobody's familiar with each other. So that's understandable. But when we are running an actual double move route, like I'm running a post corner or an out and up, this basic advice, but not a lot of wide receivers do it, you have to make the first move, the post or the out in that situation, look exactly like how you would run a post or an out. You got to make sure you run it the same way. You structure the route the same way. You have the same speed. You have the same body language. All of those things are called selling your routes. And selling your routes is what will get you open. So if you have to run a post route versus inside shade off man, the last thing you want to do is try to stem the DB and break in front of him. So we don't want to do that if I have to run a post and go or a post corner. I when you do The reason why you don't want to do that is because if you stem him to the inside, remember, what's this DB's responsibility? And what's the best way to get him to move? Attacking his leverage, right? So he's going to do something called a weave to the inside, and you're going to run that post right into him. And you're not going to be able to win on a double move. So you would want to attack his outside shoulder. So that's what Innis does. He stems to the inside at the start, but then he takes this like pressure step and threatens the outside shoulder of the DB because that is getting him to think fate. We're trying to get him to open up his hips and make him think we're going to slip underneath on a post, which is how you would actually run the post. Remember, how we structure my routes and how I run my routes is based off of the DB's leverage and how he is lined up. It's not based off of the route itself. It's how is the DB lined up. So he gets him to flip his hips. He's trying to slip underneath, sell like he's running a post. His hips are committed. His shoulders are committed. He's running hard to the post. All of those things is what's going to get a DB to try to flip, try to drive, and get those eyes in the backfield and that is where I can get separation on a double move so fellas number one thing when running a double move make the first move look like the actual route in terms of how you run the route and in terms of how you run the how you sell the route when you break to the post those three steps you take got to be fast got to be full stride and you got to commit to it with your upper body if you don't do that a db will fish out a double move especially a disciplined db like this one right here so let's play this thing again full speed one more time great job by ennis attacking that outside shoulder to make it look like an actual post and then selling the post for those three hard steps remember we'll get an earlier thrown ball and that'll be a lot easier of a touchdown so this is a live game example here from Brandon Ennis, and I just want to talk about how wide receivers can get more separation versus press coverage if they try to work their releases like he does here. So this is going to be like a head up press look. So anytime that you guys are doing press releases, you want to think of it like you're driving. I'm sure all of you have been in a car before, if not driven a car before, and you've seen three, like a three lane highway. You got the far right lane, you got the middle lane, and you got the left lane. So if I'm trying to get this DB, if I'm trying to take an inside release, my goal is to get this DB to move all the way to that far right lane or far left lane. So with my release, I actually have to step there because that is the only way a DB is going to bite when watching my hips. So let's play this full speed. So he actually ends up making this DB fall with his release, and it certainly helps to have speed and explosion off the ball. But when you come off the ball, Remember, if he's watching our hips, I got to sell with my hips. So he does this kind of crossover fake to the outside, but I want you to see, look at how far he is stepping. Look at where his hips are. Look at where his shoulders are. You are forcing this DB to have to make a decision because trust me, he has to honor this, guys. If you don't have your hips and your shoulders like this and you're not stepping here, he could probably maybe be able to recover. But if your hips and shoulders are looking like this, you're stepping to the outside, everything looks like a fade. Anytime that you're trying to take an inside release, you were trying to make this DB think fade. Anytime you were trying to take an outside release, we were trying to make this DB think slant. So to make him really have to think slant and have to commit, those hips, those shoulders, and that step all need to get to that far right lane. And you see what that does. We slip back because we know where we're going, and that DB doesn't have the balance, maybe doesn't have the quickness to be able to get out of that thing as fast as we do. That is a textbook release there from Brandon Ennis. Now, another thing I want to talk about too, fellas, when guys try to do this and when guys try to sell outside, they do not stay in a positive shin angle and that prevents them from getting out of this release so sometimes guys will go to the extreme with what i say i say step outside the frame so what they'll do is they'll step like this but their toe will be pointed towards the sideline knee pointed towards the sideline hip way too far open now yes that might get the db to bite but you're going to get stuck at that break point because you can't push off of your cut leg 
when your toe is open and when your shin is facing this way, like your knees facing towards the sideline. But if we keep my toes slightly pointed forward, I could keep that weight distributed on the inside arch of my foot. You don't want your knee facing downward or your ankle facing downward, but you want a positive angle. This can allow you to push off of that cut and be able to slip back to the inside. So again, remember, we want a loose upper half. We want a twitchy lower body, but we want to try to keep that foot placement correct. Now, is this something that you can think about in a live game scenario? No. But when you guys are doing drill work, you guys are working with your quarterback, you're working against a DB and maybe it's not live. Yes, you can think about foot placement because those details matter. It's all about building good habits. And this is a good habit that he has built over time that you guys can also build yourselves. So let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. Great job by Annis getting this separation off the line by stepping all the way to that far right lane. All right, fellas, really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. Always appreciate the feedback. It's always great to hear from you guys as usual. And again, fellas, if you'd like to come out and train with us in 12 different states across the country this year, and if you came out to one of our three already previous camps or signed up for Charlotte, we really appreciate the support. And we'd love to have the rest of you out to our 12 off-season camps. So very first link below if you're interested, fellas. I'll see you guys next time.